Okay, thank you very much. Welcome to the webinar on behalf of EADI. Um, I would like to talk a little bit on, on the background um, of the book. Um, because the book is a result of a dialogue held in the association in the past three years. Uh, so I refer to the book that we are presenting today, Building Development Studies for the New Millennium. And the initial aim of this dialogue was to update our definition of development studies from 2005. And uh, development studies as such have undergone an enormous change in the past years, taking into account key new global challenges. And we have approved an updated definition of development st studies last year, which is available on the ERD website, so you can download it here. But we have also realized uh, in the course of the discussion that this is not enough. We needed a more intensive discussion on the issues that EAD members, we have about 130 institutional members, were interested in. And we invited and discussed a larger set of papers on important dimensions of development, which reflect the thinking of the wider community more in detail. And in this uh, spirit, I would like to give the floor to my co-editors, Isa Baud and Elisabetta Basile. So, so I, I'd like to ask Isa um, to, to start her presentation. Um, okay, hold on. I, can you hear me? We can yeah. hear you and we can also see the presentation. Okay, uh, Elisabetta is going to start the presentation. Okay, so I will okay. switch to the first slide. Mm -hmm. oh, let me just check that that's going. Yeah, okay, go ahead, Elisabetta. Okay. So, as uh, Susanna has just said, the RD has been discussing the, the meaning and the scope of development studies for a long time. Um, the contemporary discussion started in 2005 when a, a AR division paper, the first AR division paper was written. And uh, at that time, the aim of, the, of this vision paper was uh, uh, to deal with the Bologna Agreement on higher education. Uh, because the, the Bologna Agreement on higher education was about to change completely uh, the, the, the way in which a university was warning across Europe. And in particular, it was changing, the, the, was introducing the rules for the accreditation process, uh, mo taking into account uh, one of the major future of, of disciplines, which is the disciplinary approach. Uh, uh, development studies was in serious difficulty in relation to that because as by definition as uh, Julia has just said development studies is uh, composed by a, a, a wide number of disciplines and then a pro an accreditation process based on a, a view um, of a single discipline was not uh, useful for us. So the, the, the ADI decided to deal with this problem. And then um, a, a, a very important uh, a vision paper was produced. But then um, this wasn't, of course, enough. It was not en enough because it was focused mainly on education, while ADI is also uh, an association which works on uh, research. So by 2015, we started again to discuss uh, formally within uh, our meetings uh, the problem of the research and development studies. And the changes we were dealing with at that time, in 2000, starting from 2015, uh, were many. There were changes in the world development, changes in the way in, in development research was done in theory and in practice. And there were ma major changes in the way in which university was working and the publication landscape was organized. Then uh, uh, we decided to start uh, uh, to think about these problems. Uh, and uh, our, our analysis, our discussion, which was quite strong and quite long in time, 
start first to, to consider the changes in world development. The, by 2015, the changes were many. Uh, globalization has already changed the, the, the situation of world development. The, when we started to realize that, the, that, that there was a major problem of climate change, that the most problem in the world was going into a situation in which the impact of human beings on, uh, on Earth was not about uh, to be stopped in any way. Uh, so that was a problem we started to, to think, it was in a way a new problem, not exactly a new problem, but a problem with the new um, uh, urgency. Uh, the new, also, also the geography of poverty changed very much. Um, global poverty uh, was uh, about to become a, a, a a, a problem with different aspects than before. And uh, another major, pro major problem started, which was inequality. Inequality in many senses, not only economic inequality, income inequality, but also other forms of inequality, which required to be analyzed in depth. Uh, also the political scene was, was changing. The emergence of BRICS uh, and uh, other uh, regional um, association of, of countries, BRICS the most important one, uh, were changing the, the power relations uh, in, in the world and also uh, the, change, the aid system was changing. Was changing. Uh, we had uh, two major UN campaigns and these two campaigns, uh, even if uh, uh, they were not, the, the first one campaign, the Millennium campaign was not able to reach um, the, uh, the, 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 the outcomes everybody wanted to, to reach. Uh, in any way, the, the, US, the, the first millennium campaign changed very much the situation, uh, the relationship between developing and developed countries. New actors emerged uh, and in, in, the, in aid, uh, a new important um, role of non-DAC countries uh, were um, to, to be considered as important. Uh, and another, another problem which was mo most important, and it is, is still, uh, in my opinion, the most important problem that we, the world has to face uh, today is migration. Maybe um, I, I'm speaking from my uh, perspective as an Italian. We, in, in my country, migration is a major problem, but I, I'm, I'm convinced that it is a major problem in, in the world. Uh, now, after a um, few years from 2015, another problem is emerging very strongly, uh, very clearly, which is the, the changes in, the, in, in an era in which uh, globalization seems uh, to losing uh, the, the strength uh, uh, it had in the past. Uh, then, uh, these changes in, economic, in economy and in uh, power relations had a major impact on, on the theory and practices of development research. Uh, new topics emerged, climate change, migration, inequalities, poverty in high income and middle, middle income countries, and also uh, one problem which had a major uh, impact on the, the, the research on the on, the, on capitalism was the emergence of varieties of capitalism which were um, differentiating the trajectories of many developing and emerging countries. Uh, from the perspective of development research, new voices and new narratives emerges, increasing participation of scholars and students, most, most very important aspect of the whole uh, of the whole discourse, uh, students from Global South were coming to university even more strongly to university in the North. And all these changes were making the uh, analytical categories uh, which we have, we have been using so far uh, inadequate. North-South uh, is a contradiction which has, is, has been losing most of its meaning. meaning. Um, uh, the contrapos contraposition between uh, industrialized and developing countries and also the contraposition, uh, the, the opposition between donor and re recipient. Uh, 
Together with that, uh, uh, we uh, had uh, another process uh, which uh, was very important to keep into account and it was the, the, mm, the process which led to a major change in the publication landscape. Uh, this process is very much linked to the Bologna process and the accreditation process in very many ways, and, but it, it had a major impact for us uh, for development studies, for us as scholars in development studies. Uh, the range of topics in development studies uh, uh, evolved, changed very much. Uh, development studies became uh, related to other disciplines in other, in the other approaches. Um, in the, 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 the work of scholars and researchers was uh, assessed on the basis of uh, uh, criteria like the impact factor and, and uh, also the concept of quality uh, of, uh, of development research was changing. Uh, it was uh, important to publish in journals while I remember very well when I started university what was important uh, the, the, my university career, what was important was to publish a good book. Uh, now this uh, is, not, is not like that anymore. What is important is to publish on, in, on journals and in particular journals of, of, of a certain level. Uh, the debate on the method of uh, um, research is also uh, discussed. Uh, critical um, participatory analysis was contra is, has been um, opposing to uh, scientific rigor uh, and this of course has obliged the development uh, st st scholars to, to deal with a, a number of issues which have, are important both in political and in practical, ter practical terms. Uh, this, of course, has had an implication very strong on DS, on development studies as a research field, and this uh, is a topic that Isa will deal with. Okay, thanks, Elisabetta. I'll take over. Um, what we have seen this, the changes in uh, development processes across the world, such as uh, Elisabetta has sketched them, actually meant that development studies as a research field faced a large number of challenges. To begin with the complexity because we now recognize issues of environment, ecosystems, um, other disciplines other than the, the classic disciplines of economics and sociology and anthropology in development studies. That complexity of disciplines and the urgency of development processes actually mean that we need to engage much more with other fields of both research and practice. It's also meant that development studies has, has to take on board, say, other say epistemological changes, other kinds of narratives and paradigms with which we work, and also ontologically a different way of knowing about how we, how we acquire knowledge. So the question that we had in our discussions was uh, how do we go beyond the multi and interdisciplinarity in terms of development studies? We posed a number of questions as a part of the discussions for this book. The first is the, say, where, do we, where are our sources of knowledge? And we recognize that those sources of knowledge come from multiple sources, both in terms of, um, say, people and in terms of uh, databases, etc. So sourcing knowledge is not so limited only to the academic field as such. Secondly, we wanted to make much more explicit the links between knowledge production and power relations because they in fact influence the way that knowledge production is carried out and also whose knowledge is given priority. Obviously for development studies, the aims of development studies have always been a very central question that we've posed and the question is do we need to uh, change, the, did we need to change those aims to reflect the fact that we're engaging with other fields of research and practice? And finally, particularly, how do we engage with the world uh, of practice and, um, and, and uh, different processes in terms of making the kind of changes that we suggest 
uh, more effective. So how do we link our academic research to policy and practice? Now, in this IADI discussion, which we've been having actually uh, a, a number of years, and, and, and of course up till about last year when we were starting to put the book together, we've done a number of, uh, we've made a number of products as we went on. And that is particularly two papers and uh, this edited book, which you now see before you. The first thing that we did from IADI uh, and from the uh, executive committee of IADI, uh, which is the membership from each country whose, um, uh, whose institutes are members of, of IADI as such, is to commission a vision paper uh, to the Graduate Institute, to NORAG, and to the Institute of Social Studies in The Hague. And what they did is put together um, a paper which is one of, has become one of the chapters of the book reflecting discussions with European scholars as such, a literature review or literature search in terms of how development studies has come through in, um, in, in journals, in journal articles and publications, and secondly discussions with in expert meetings in both um, South Africa in uh, and in China to have much more of a, a global perspective on what is going on. The second paper that was commissioned was through REDES and REDES is um, uh, a research network which was uh, originated with our uh, Spanish representative Sergio Tizanos uh, who set it up in mm, goodness almost I think almost 10 years ago now and that was a Spanish language um, and also Latin American scholars network, which uh, still exists and is very active today. So the paper was commissioned particularly to uh, obtain and to reflect on the Latin American contributions to development studies debate, which obviously have, have a long history. And finally, say the discussions that we had in the executive committee at the various meetings and the conferences uh, which we have twice a year and every three years uh, in terms of a general conference led to contributions from uh, various IADI members who were quite interested to write chapters on the issues that, uh, that concern them. And the result of that collaborative effort is what you see here before you in terms of this book. Now, if we look at building development studies in the new millennium, uh, the book actually has uh, starts from the point of view that we need to engage with global change. It has four sections, which are, I'll, and I'll go through them in a minute, is narratives and paradigms to reflect on new ways of thinking, new theoretical um, perspectives that we have, Secondly, perspectives on knowledges. So where does our knowledge come from? How is our knowledge constructed? And uh, what, what kinds of knowledges do we actually acknowledge in terms of power and social relations? Third, we're looking at the way that scientific impact is, um, is recognized in the academic field and what implications um, that has for whose knowledge is actually recognized or not, and the methodologies that um, are accepted and that have emerged uh, in terms of um, producing development studies, particularly between the more classic, uh, you could say natural science methodologies, more participatory methodologies, and the extent to which those different, the, the, the quality of those methodologies is recognized across the board. And finally, last but not least, certainly, are the new themes in development studies with which uh, the more classical development studies have been engaging and how they have changed our way of thinking in development studies and the Southern voices um, who are having happily much more of an impact on the way that development studies is being taken up and reflects actually the, the the first cracks, you could say, in the north-south theoretical divide. If we look at section one, 
what we see there are actually two major, uh, major, major areas that we've taken up. One is the fact that we recognize that the uh, human impact on the world as we know it and as it's um, evolving as, an, uh, as a global ecosystem is the, um, is the recognition that we're having far too much impact uh, on the world and it's on the one hand and on the other hand that we need to think about development much more from an uh, inclusive development point of view rather than a growth perspective towards the future and those two hang together. It has a number of implications for the way that we do we approach our research questions. First is that it requires much more of an interactive and reflexive thinking. That is people working in practice um, need to be involved in setting up our research questions and our analytical frameworks um, and also we need to recognize say areas of research such as uh, biology such as natural sciences chemical uh, chemistry etc in terms of trying to integrate those when we talk about development that ha all that that kind of approach in itself means that we need to look at multidisciplinary interdisciplinary and particularly transdisciplinary approaches uh, because they become become quite essential in understanding the world around us and when we talk about transdisciplinary uh, just uh, just to refresh your memory, that is actually talking with with from um, knowledge from practice and people who have that kind of practice based knowledge in terms of developing your analytical questions. That means um, that development studies requires this transdisciplinary, transnational across uh, national borders and particularly across uh, regional borders as well as post-normal engaging with other fields and with the hard sciences. Now, post-normal, in the words of Joyita Gupta, means that, um, that we're moving away from what is called value-free, norm-free kinds of uh, research, such, a, such as is common in the, in the natural sciences, um, to, to recognizing that we need to um, have more of this transdisciplinary uh, approach even when we're talking uh, with our colleagues from the from what is what are called the hard sciences the the final point and a very essential point is the way that knowledge from the global south is is recognized particularly at the moment as um, as you could say location or place-based knowledge but is very seldom or far too, too uh, not often enough uh, included in theory making and that's the othering of knowledge from the global south the result is that our theories as they stand are very northern based and northern biased and often not uh, not very applicable in the rest of the world so that uh, reduces the effectiveness of our analytical frameworks. The second point in these new narratives and paradigms section is the fact that we have traditions in development studies which reflect different theoretical and empirical approaches. And we've, we've included three major areas in our book, a chapter on Spanish language traditions, where particularly the influence of the dependency theory, but also new theories around when vivir um, the well-being in the wider sense, not only of humans, but also, for instance, of nature and animals and plants are included in, in the discussions. Secondly, the Francophone tradition, which for us as Ayadi members is very important to recognize equally with the uh, sometimes quite dominant English language tradition, but the Francophone tradition, which has as its basis for theorization, very intense, long, long-standing empirical field work, uh, more so than in, in the English language uh, context, a very strong interdisciplinary links, which has um, uh, is, is a strong contribution in itself. And finally, what has come up more recently is the post-colonial uh, studies approach in which it's essential to recognize the narratives 
uh, that exist around development studies in various areas as to recognize that they are based on unequal power relations and to un 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 unpack them in order to reduce the bias that is inherent in such approaches. The second section um, deals with our perspectives on knowledges. And there we have uh, a number of chapters which engage particularly with the idea of knowledge and research as a social construction. Development studies has always suffered from the idea that it is not scientific enough. And the authors of the chapter on engaged excellence discuss particularly the, 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 the issues that deal with how you um, ensure that you deliver high quality research recognizable by um, say the scientific journals and, and the, the fields such as economics which are much more data-based but do that still maintaining this idea and this, this practice of co-constructing knowledge with people in practice, mobilizing evidence, but which is much more impact oriented. And finally, by building enduring um, partnerships, emphasizing that mutual independent interdependence between researchers and people with knowledge in practice. I think that's a very important chapter in that sense, because it actually uh, deals with one of the major discussions, which has been there for a long time in development studies. The second is transformation studies. And there I think we uh, have an important chapter which looks towards the way that we can start to approach the issues in, um, say, uh, that have to do with climate change, with ecosystem change, and with what directions we can go towards in the future, which of course development studies always has had implicitly because it talks about development processes but we need to do that now in a much broader way rather than focusing on economic growth. And even when we say, okay, let's focus, we, we include poverty and inequality issues, but we need to go beyond that basic paradigm that we have to look at, um, at our global future and our planetary future. Third is the multiple knowledges, this idea of Whose knowledge are we talking about? Whose knowledge do we recognize? How do we frame issues? So what are the silences that we leave when we frame issues and when we define concepts? We need to make that much more explicit um, and deal with that in our analytical frameworks to recognize bias and to identify blind spots. And that um, um, there's, there's chapters, there are several chapters on that. And finally, um, the result of this, uh, this, this basic assumption and recognition that there is unequal power in research relationships in the way that research is done between, on the one hand, North and Southern researchers. That's been an ongoing discussion about equality or research partnerships in IADI for a long time. Um, secondly, between, say, societal partners non-academic partners and researchers and the way that that unequal power in such relationships actually leads to epistemological biases in our analytical frameworks. So you find uh, work on that in the book. The third section uh, deals with two major issues. One is the methodology of doing research and the other is the scientific impact and the way that we measure our scientific impact. Um, Elisabetta already said this earlier, um, the, the scientific impact assessment, the way that it's being done increasingly in uh, our universities across the board, across the world, ignores the diversity in disciplinary fields. Say the, the relative um, weight given to articles versus books, the relative weight of, for instance, policy briefs and other reports which are used much more by practitioners and policymakers than academic articles and are much more accessible. Um, those say that the, the relative dominance of publication scores of articles in high impact journals 
means that the way that researchers work and publish and their target audiences become rather skewed. We have um, an article um, in, in a, a chapter in the book which looks at this publication and measuring scientific impact assessment in a way which shows up the biases that exist in the ways that this is done, not only in the practices at the university level, but also in the way that these databases are put together. And that has meant that IADI as an association has, um, has, uh, has written to the, um, to the now private sector company, which prepares these databases in order to suggest that the biases can actually be dealt with in, um, if, if the categorization of data is done in a different way. But that's an ongoing challenge. But it's very interesting that that system as such can be unpacked and that we can start to deal with that also in a polit more political way. Secondly, the new perceptions of development studies. What we have are a number of chapters which have looked at um, uh, new visions of development and have included new areas of concern. So this is, um, um, for instance, one of these is the idea of transformation as such and the idea of how you can apply transformation studies to different areas. And in this, art, this particular chapter that's been applied to the oceanic spaces, which is for development studies, a relatively new area to look at. And finally, the discussion on mixed research methods, which we are increasingly having in development studies is quite essential uh, to the way that we do our work. Uh, in terms of exploring these very complex issues and to do justice to the complexity of the issues that we're looking at. We're uh, mentioning a couple of them. One, say, is the participatory methodology, which is already uh, known for some time, but also the increasing use of spatial methodologies and the, um, which allow us to look at at uh, concentrations and inequalities in the way that uh, particular um, development, um, development processes are spread out. For instance, urbanization, you could uh, talk about suburbanization on the one hand, or urban concentrations. But the spatial inequalities and the relational issues that are related to the ways that those spatial inequalities play out are something which is increasingly taken up. That also um, relates to issues, for instance, like the way that we use data from our telephones to, to look at mobility issues, or for instance, remote sensing to look at the way that uh, the spread of, for instance, climate change or climate change um, patterns or impacts uh, play out. It also relates, and we've not said too much about that yet, to issues of big data and how big data is used. And that is certainly an area for the future, uh, which we should take up also in development studies. However, when we look at these kind of new databases, which are being used in new ways of collecting data, the reliability and the validity of such databases is quite essential to obtain meaningful results. The discussions on, uh, for instance, big data that you don't need a proper uh, research methodology and use that, but anything that you correlate will actually give an, an, a meaningful outcome are issues that we definitely need to engage with. And finally, the fourth section is about new voices and themes, particularly from the global south. Now, the the, in development studies, we've seen increasingly, particularly as the BRICS and academic communities in the BRICS have, um, have grown stronger, is that new areas of concern are being voiced by the academic uh, community in different southern countries, but still existing inequalities in research partnerships across, uh, say, in, in a tra transnational way, access to funding, 
which is very different and the recognition of the work that Southern scholars are doing limit joint efforts, which are truly joint efforts, but also limit the possibilities of Southern scholars for doing uh, empirically based or comparative field, field work based research. We have a chapter here on the shared visions which have, on development studies, which have been developed in two contexts. One, in a very long term, um, say, at, at, at com academic community level um, network between India and the Netherlands in the context of the Institute of Social Studies with the Indian academic community in which there was a discussion on uh, what development studies means and how it's um, how the different scholars have uh, worked on development studies for a longer period of time. And secondly, from the perspective of Tanzania, which has a long-standing history of development studies, which were mandatory uh, nationally across the board for all academics, and the extent to which those development studies and the role of development studies in Tanzania is now changing towards future visions. What has in terms of themes, say the issue of environmental studies as combined with development studies, particularly uh, is a very strong chapter. The, the issue of gender perspectives and how they play out in development studies. And, and finally, the research on global urbanization as a theme, which is becoming increasingly important, uh, not only in development studies, but also for instance, in the IPCC reports, the UNEP reports, etc. And all these provide important new lenses to explore development problems in this new millennium. And these themes are setting, uh, we hope, both uh, say the future research agenda for the next generation of development researchers and practitioners, and we hope to have a contribution with this book in terms of uh, setting out what are the issues that uh, we should be looking at. We hope it, will, hope it will be used a great deal, particularly in, at the postgraduate level. Thanks. Thank you so much, um, Elisabeth and Isa, for, for giving us this really concise um, overview about a really complex uh, topic and a really complex and diverse book. And I hope that this has raised everyone's appetite uh, to take a closer look at the book. So I will, would now like to invite everyone um, who's attending to um, put out their questions, their comments, um, their thoughts, their views on, on what we have mapped here. Um, and um, yeah, please feel free to, to just indicate in the chat box that you want to, to speak. Um, I guess to, to give everyone a little bit, a little short moment to think, I would um, kick off um, with the first question uh, to, the, to the three editors. Um, and because I think you, you highlighted so, so nicely that it's development studies is, is such a complex field and such a diverse set of, of issues. Um, and you emphasize the difficulty of, of definition. You outlined the whole process within the ARD of trying to find, to come to a definition of development studies. Um, and then the, the book is titled Development uh, Studies for the New Millennium. So I, I wondered, Isa, especially since you very much emphasized uh, the value of, of transformation studies, why in the new millennium we still need development studies? Why should we not, you know, at the turn of the millennium say, okay, maybe this is too, too complex, too value laden. Maybe we can, we can look for something else. Okay, well, let me say a couple of things. One is transformation um, as, yeah. Okay, development studies is normative. So there's always this normative perspective that we have. Um, and the experience that we have in development studies of making very explicit which norms we have and what kind of development we're talking about is uh, very important also when we include other areas of research um, in, into, into our field or, or to engage with them. 
And I think in that sense, uh, transformation studies perhaps is a, a somewhat younger field. And again, uh, making the value to, to ask the question, how can we uh, combine values in terms of transformation and development uh, in such a fashion that transformation can produce the best kind of outcome or say an outcome which is favorable uh, not only to the planet as such but also to the yeah the majority of people etc would be some would be a discussion uh, so in that sense it, it's trying to make a combination of values to have a discussion about values that underlie our, our perspectives in both transformation as well as in development studies and I think we can use our experience from development studies in, in, in having that discussion. Are there any questions from the from the floor so far? Please don't be don't be shy. I think everyone's still digesting. Maybe I can I can go for a second one. I was wondering um, because there's so much. Also, you you mentioned um, global change and the need for, for development studies um, to engage with this. Why is there no chapter on on the SDGs? Ah. <laughs> okay. Uh, there, yeah, Elisabetta. Oh. We can't hear you. Uh, ah. No. Ah. If you want to start, then I can add something. Otherwise, I say something before, as you like. Uh, because the question is why we don't have a chapter on the SDGs. Don't, we don't have a chapter on the SDGs. Mm. Do you want I, I say something? Yes. Uh, first, we do not have a chapter on the SDGs because to assess the, the impact of SDGs is still early. That is the, is, is the major reason. But of course, from my perspective, there are also other reasons most, more important than this. The fact is that the SDGs are a very, a very partial answer to, to the changes we have dealing with. And we need, uh, we, that is my, op my personal opinion, we need uh, to, to move on, on a different field. Uh, we have said something in the introduction about uh, SDGs, uh, and of course we could uh, uh, have a chapter. But uh, if I had to write a chapter on, S on SDGs, I am afraid I would have to be very critical and uh, probably it's too early to be so critical. Uh, Critiques on, on the critiques on SDGs are, are so many that, uh, of course, now uh, the only thing you can do is to summarize the critique which has already, already done or otherwise to wait a few more years to see that uh, they are not in condition as how they are organized to, to, to solve the problems they, they say they would solve, starting from the problem of climate change, for instance. Avoiding poverty and inequality, which are uh, two slippery fields uh, uh, even more, but if you, if, you if you take the impact on climate change, then the contradiction between development, uh, e economic growth and sustainable development is there and you should go inside this contradiction. I think, I still think that the book was not the right place to do that. Because it was I, just yeah. a introductory book. I agree with you, Elisabetta, and particularly if I'm looking at chapter two, which is an inclusive development perspective uh, on development studies in the Anthropocene. What I think is important uh, for us as an academic community is to get away from the SDGs as a measurement tool with measurement criteria and specific indicators and to go back to what the original uh, purpose of the SDGs was, namely to talk about sustainable development, to talk about inclusive development uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, uh, in a more analytical way. 
And I think in that sense, we've not talked about the SDGs, but chapter two, on the one hand, is um, very much um, concerned with the way that social, economic, and environmental issues uh, work together or work against each other, particularly in, this, uh, in, the, in, the new, in the new era, which they call the Anthropocene. And secondly, the uh, chapter by uh, um, Alf and Hornage, which talks about transformation, um, also looks at these issues in a more uh, holistic fashion. And finally, last but not least, the uh, chapter by Emma Schultz on the relevance of environmental research for development studies. So I think there, so imp implicitly we, we talk about the SDGs, we don't do it in a bureaucratic sense, not in this book. Which is maybe the better choice. <laughs> well, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> everybody has to judge for themselves on that. Well, we, there's a question um, there by Chloe. Um, well, first, she's commenting on that uh, the price is quite an obstacle, especially for students. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a discussion that's very true, and uh, we ourselves realized that. And in a meeting with the directors that we had, the Ayadi directors, there was a lot of enthusiasm for using the book in, in uh, courses for postgraduates, but the price is in a huge hindrance. And we've talked to the publisher about this, suggested that, in fact, rather than going for this um, hardback book, that uh, they should go for a paperback and or uh, an e-book. But uh, unfortunately, the e-book price is not, does, is, difference is not enough actually to make it very uh, attractive to mm -hmm. students. So um, if this is really, say, the, um, the extent to which this is an issue, please let the Secretariat know um, and we'll see what, what possibilities there are to, to open up access to some extent, okay? I would like to add something about this problem of price. We have been uh, together, they added the EXCO and all, all together, the people who, are worked, who have been working on the book, uh, very uh, worried about the price of the book. Uh, yes. And we are very, worried about the trend which is going on that uh, what is going on is that uh, uh, not not only students but also academics in poor countries cannot buy these books yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is a problem which fortunately uh, is uh, is being solved has been solved in in a few areas with open access i'm very fond of open access, I think we all should move toward the, uh, open access. Uh, but of course, this requires money, requires money and re requires, requires resources. Uh, and this is a problem, but we still, we have that in mind. The only solution I would see is to, to work against the, the publisher and put uh, the e-manuscript on the web some, some way in such a way that people can read the book but that is illegal of course we cannot do it <laughs> we can... i think there's there's some need for again transformation also in the academic publishing yeah. landscape right yeah. i think there there was also a second part of the question um, asking um, whether you think that an analysis um, of organizational cultures providing development programs would be valuable in understanding development in the new millennium yeah, um, definitely. I um, understand. I understand in understanding what, Julia. Um, in understanding development. Development, simply. Okay. Um, yes, I think there have been a large number of books on the more classical development and aid processes. What I think um, um, is going to be um, something that we might look forward towards the future is this whole idea that both funding agencies for, for aid as well as for academic research are talking, um, are assessing the impact of the research that they fund and, or that they want. A, one, the impact on policy and practice. So on the side, for instance, of the national funding agencies, there's much more 
emphasis on um, the impact on society in terms of research, which has also um, made the scope for basic research less. There's less interest and, and funding available for that and much more funding available for applied research. Um, and that has led to a whole discussion on what we call the theory of change and how this change takes place. So the idea of, yeah, on, on the one hand, there was idea of dissemination of new research results. That was sort of the classical pattern, which is, is, is very one way. Then there's much more idea about communication of research results. And more recently, the realization that to have an impact, you really have to work much more closely together with practitioner organizations of various types, whether they be policymakers or practitioners in a local area or whatever, um, to really have an impact and to, to ensure that the people in the organizations whom it concerns take up um, ideas that come out of research. And that's where that idea of much more interactive um, research processes, co-creation of knowledge, etc., has come from. So this, I, this, this debate, in fact, there's been much less published about that, and I think it's almost time for uh, a, a, a good publication or a set of publications on this idea of how a theory, on, on, this, on this debate on theory of change in terms of impact of interventions. Um, and intervention programs, how they work out. Can I add something to what uh, just, uh, Isa just said? I agree completely with what she said. Um, I would like just to add that what I think, the contribution of this book, in my opinion, is not as much on, the under on understanding development, but it is on, on understanding change. Um, if you uh, if you take the, uh, the word uh, development uh, uh, as progress, in the book there is not much progress uh, because most of the chapters describe what is going on in the world um, in a very difficult way and it is easy. There are few chapters, no, not few, several chapters in which the, the picture of the world which is uh, uh, becoming real is, is uh, is not so nice, is not so developed, in fact. So I would have uh, uh, called the book uh, a book on uh, change rather than on, on development. <laughs> uh, and the change, the, the outcome of change is not always nice to yeah. see. And what we are doing with this book, uh, some of the chapters in the book, what, what are doing after, uh, actually is to describe the world as is becoming and which is not nice, which is a book, is a, is a world in which we have to intervene and we have to intervene quickly uh, if we want to be able to solve some of the problems. That is another reason why we could not deal with the, the um, SDGs because they are a, a too simple solution while mm -hmm. the problems we are describing in the book are much big. Uh, uh, and then uh, the, the image which comes out is not an image of development, rather it is an image of change and we cannot really under understand now what is the outcome of this change. The change we might not like it at the end. Maybe we can directly follow up with uh, Zainab's question um, and she's, she's asking about um, how much multidimensional poverty is discussed um, in the book um, and um, she says that the dynamism and poverty has proven that poverty measurement is beyond the tagging uh, value of, of um, such as people living on less than a dollar or a dollar fifty per day. Um, and we can see that lots of measurement, um, such as access to education or basic um, needs, um, uh, um, are missing. So, how much is that? She's asking how much, how much relevance, how much that is discussed in the book. Okay. Um, I recognize this issue of, of uh, multidimensional poverty, and of course, so much has been written about that. 
um, by our uh, by our British colleagues, particularly in um, that I don't think it's necessary for us to, as it were, repeat that. What we have do have, and that makes a, a, a new continent, um, a contribution, if you like, is the chapter on methodologies and development studies, where uh, this issue of the multidimensionality of the issues that we're talking about has been incorporated in the chapter. Um, because the, say, recognizing uh, the various dimensions of poverty or inequality is, is uh, in, in an analytical framework is already, I think, fairly well established nowadays. But what, the method, what it means in terms of your methodologies when you're doing research, that, um, that is a slightly different thing. Um, but I, yeah, sure, there are things missing, if you like, in this, uh, in this book, because it can't be all inclusive. Uh, we, we, I think we would have to have three volumes at least for that. Um, it's, um, it could be a very nice contribution, you know, for um, the, the person who's just asked the question to actually focus on how that could be combined with some of the issues that we've raised here in the book. That would be a really interesting addition because the, the debate doesn't stop here, obviously. And maybe the um, the Adi blog provides a good forum for yeah. for actually following up um, on on these discussions. I would also like to invite everyone to to get in touch if you would like to to contribute your thoughts or maybe by by means of a reflection piece, um, which we would be happy to to also share then via our blog. <coughs> Yeah, I think we're we're close to three o'clock now. So I'm um, unfortunately I think we we have to close this session. Um, I would like to thank Isa Baut and um, Elisabetta Basile and Susanne from Ita for um, taking the time um, <coughs> giving this talk. Um, and I was would also like to maybe by means of kind of circumventing. Um, the issue with the with the publishers to to follow up on on our <coughs> webinar series on the book where we will one by one in have the well or in, invite all the authors to give um give a talk about their chapters about their work about the thoughts behind so we'll actually have a chance to to talk to them directly um, and engage with them directly. Again, the same with the with the RD blog, where we will also share um, some some contents of the book, um, which is obviously free and open access. So um, I wish everyone um, a good afternoon, and uh, thank you very much for joining. And see you next time. Bye bye.